So we are recording this evening. Um, graciously, Scott's allowed us to do that. And it will be posted on the Historical Society's YouTube channel within a couple of days. Um, if you registered and you're attending here, you will receive a link to it when it is available uh, to view. All right. With all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our speaker for this evening. Uh, Scott Powell is a noted arts and design historian and a frequent lecturer on Frances Elkins. Through his extensive research on her life and work, he has documented more than 250 Elkins commissions, many previously unknown. Powell has gathered many rare images of Elkins interiors, as well as her extensive correspondence with the leading designers, artists, and creatives of her day. Scott's book, Frances Elkins, Visionary American Designer, was published by Rizzoli in 2023. On his Instagram page, which he'll give you the handle to at the end of this presentation, I believe, uh, Scott shares new discoveries about Elkins on a regular basis. Uh, his background in journalism includes being the founding producer of Dr. Helen Caldicott's environmental radio show, If You Love This Planet. And with that, I am happy to turn it over to you, Scott. Great, thank you, Jenny, and uh, welcome everyone. So um, I'm going to give an overview of Francis's career, and I'm going to concentrate on showing uh, photos of her house and David Adler's house in Libertyville, some rare images of both houses, as well as samples of Francis's work around the country. So um, first slide, this is the cover of my book, uh, which is now available on Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and in bookstores. The cover image is the silvered uh, dining room of Mrs. Carolyn Morse Ely in Chicago. And I'll show you some photos of that apartment in my book. David Adler fitted out the apartment and Francis decorated it. So um, here's a photo of Francis, 1938, taken by the great photographer Louise Dahl Wolf. She's one of many great photographers who uh, captured Elkins's work or or took photos of Francis or David Adler. And uh, she's looking through her scrap one of her scrapbooks. And these are some examples of wallpapers she used, including the blue and white Monuments of Paris paper used in David Adler's bedroom and her house in Monterey, and a Swedish linen, green and white Swedish linen that she used in, in a few projects. Um, she was not only a great, uh, an excellent interior designer, but she was also prolific furniture designer. These are some examples of furniture she designed, including what's now called the loop chair, upper left, uh, what's uh, referred to as the spider chair, lower right, and um, Kappa shell table, upper right for one of her clients, and uh, a fringed table, a uh, rather chair for a client in Oklahoma with its original honey beige raw silk fabric. She also designed many lamps. On the left is a green crackled glass table lamp that she had made by Salviati, the Venetian glass company in the 40s. Um, the drawing is of a table lamp that she um, was, was inspired by a Giacometti design and that particular lamp was made for the living room of the Paul Winslow's, and then a candlestick lamp and a gilded bean jar lamp. She also designed a lot of fabrics. These are examples of chenille bedspreads she created in the 1940s for the American company Cabin Crafts. You can see her use of uh, interesting patterns and colors. Um, here are a few elements of her style, which you'll see in the rooms that I'm going to show. Symmetry and proportion, something she learned from her brother, the great uh, Chicago architect, David Adler, mixing antiques and modern. This wasn't really done when she started out in the 20s uh, or distilling the traditional into something simpler, blending various cultures, European, American, Asian, Mexican. She spent a lot of time in Europe ev almost every year. Mexico, she went there in the 1940s during World War II spent some time in China and Japan in the 1920s. Uh, textural contrast, uh, the historian Stanley Barrows said that that was one of Frances's strongest uh, suits was how she could combine so many textures in a room. Her skilled use of color, you'll see that she uses bold colors and quieter colors effectively. Inviting sense of comfort, what her grandson David calls a down-home quality. 
uh, combining very high-end things with very humble things, uh, daring juxtapositions, and uh, absence of clutter. So um, she started out, she spent actually the first half of her life in Milwaukee. She didn't move to California to get married until she was about 30. This is the Queen Anne style house on Prospect Avenue where she spent the first 30 years of her life. If you're interested in Prospect Avenue, there's uh, um, John Eastberg does a two hour lecture you can watch on YouTube about the mansions of Prospect Avenue in Milwaukee. So uh, this is just an interesting to think of her growing up in this Victorian atmosphere. She was born in 1887, married in California in 1918. And that's about when she formally started her design career. This is the um, David Adler and Sons headquarters in Milwaukee. They manufactured smart men's collegiate clothing. Here's some ads for the company. You can see they're aiming for a sophisticated clientele. Um, here's David Adler on the left and Francis on the shores of Lake Michigan near their um, home in um, early 1900s. David Adler, after uh, studying at Princeton, went to the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris to study architecture between 1908 and 1911. Francis spent a lot of time visiting him and they went to great houses, traveled throughout the countryside. He, of course, uh, gathered many postcards, which he used as inspiration for his um, for his designs. This is um, Felton Elkins on the left. Francis married him in 1918 from a prominent Philadelphia family, railroad fortune. Um, and that's uh, probably on the right, Francis about 1918, a wedding photo, wedding dress photo. And then she divorced Felton within a few years. He had a wandering eye and the marriage was not successful, but she was able to retain their house in Monterey. And during the 20s, she traveled extensively um, as she was becoming a well-known interior designer. These are some of her favorite places. She, she rented a villa in Biarritz, a palazzo in Venice. She also, of course, loved Paris. She said in the 1920s, Paris was full of Californians talking about California. Uh, she went to Japan and China and um, about 19, winter 1922-23, and of course, spent a lot of time in London. This is one of the only two photos known of Francis in Europe. She's here at a party, early 1930s, and uh, opinions vary whether she's in Paris or in Venice, but that's her on the left. Um, David Adler, of course, as I mentioned, was a great influence on his sister, uh, classically trained architect, designed many beautiful country houses. This is the Carolyn Morse Ely House in Lake Bluff. And one of the interesting things David would do on some of his houses, this house and the Mrs. J. Ogden Armour House, at least initially, he put wooden Venetian blinds on the windows outside, uh, uh, which is very unusual. So the other architect Francis worked with more than her brother. She probably did 20 commissions with Adler and maybe 40 with Gardner Daly, San Francisco architect who started out very much in the David Adler vein doing traditional French, English, Spanish style houses, then by the 1930s was doing uh, mid-century modern simple ranch houses. So that's a daily uh, photo by the great Yusuf Karsh. And uh, on the upper right, that's a, a model of his own home on Telegraph Hill, which Francis decorated in a house that he designed on Hillsborough lower right. So let's look at Francis's house. Um, she and Felton Elkins uh, bought this house in 1919. It was going to be their summer home. He played polo, and Monterey was one of the destinations for polo players. So this house, built in 1834 by Jose Amesti, was in a very sad shape. And you can see it's it's actually a ruin in this early 1900s photo. But Francis commissioned, or, or she, uh, um, she had her brother, um, renovate the house, do a lot, do some fixes on the interior architecture. So this is a 1969 photo. So you can see the house looks, looks quite good as it does today. This is a photo when she was alive showing the front elevation of the house. What's interesting is she kept, is she kept the front of the house slightly distressed, crumbling, crumbling plaster, et cetera, because I think she wanted the contrast from the outside to when you came in and it was very luxurious. So this is the entrance hall. Um, on the left is the staircase with Basque stripe runner. On the right, the 
um, a hallway toward the rear garden. Um, you can see a Giacometti uh, planter in the back there, and then a Rufino Tamayo painting above the telephone table. She had a lot of Mexican artwork in her house, including um, paintings by Diego Rivera. In the entrance hall are these two paintings of Spanish royals, which established the color scheme for the downstairs, which is blue and red. This is a library with um, a bookcase from a, um, a French uh, home that was reinstalled into the library. And um, she had the paneling painted to, to match the bookcase. Uh, and this is one of the two guest rooms downstairs. They were both done in shades of red and white. This one with French provincial antiques uh, with this bold red toile de jouy fabric. These are actual scraps of the fabric used in that guest room. The other guest room, also done in red and white, used um, uh, check patterns and a, and a more subtle toile pattern. And these are some period photos of the room in color. Um, the upstairs had this I'm wonderful Scott, this scenic- Jenny, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but would you mind holding the slides just a little bit longer? There's so much detail on this. I'm sure Okay, I'm yes, sure I will like do that. I will Thank do that, you. sorry. Um, so this is the upstairs uh, gallery, uh, and this is um, a paper called Palais Royale, a, a scenic wallpaper that Francis used in this house, and also in um, the Crane Estate, Castle Hill on Long Island. And uh, at the time she lived there, her bedroom chambers were on the left slide behind that wall, she had a boudoir, then you'd walk through her bathroom and into her bedroom. But now that the house is um, a men's club, they have opened up that back wall so that you can walk out onto the upstairs uh, balcony. Um, her sala is a very important room. Um, it's often cited as one of the, the most beautiful rooms in America. So when David Adler um, uh, renovated the room, he added the the fireplace, the the, the um, dentil molding, the, the door surrounds. Um, the very first incarnation of the room had uh, leather chairs, so it's very much probably to please her husband and all of his polo playing friends, kind of a more masculine feeling, fur rugs on the floor. But most of this furniture that she selected in the early 20s, French and English antiques, um, are, uh, were, were retained through all the incarnations of the room. So here's the sala in 1950, a Tony Duquette slide with all of its original fabrics. You can see it's very much blue and yellow, Chinese rugs, uh, French provincial wingback chairs, and uh, the textures, different textures. There's a chintz fabric on the, on the sofa on the back. Um, and then there's a needlepoint chair and some of the same colors behind that wing chair. And um, then we go to this image, which give this slide, which give you some detail shots of some pieces in the sala. Some of these photos were taken more recently. Some were taken in the 19, early 50s when she was alive. So you can see she's doing various shades of blue and turquoise and aqua with yellow accents. Um, uh, a Chinese silk painting on the walls, um, all kinds of different different things going on here. And then this is a rare shot of the sala. Francis hosting a party. In the as you walked into the sala, there was this huge Chinese rug, supposedly woven for the coronation of of a, of a Chinese emperor, but uh, uh, with prancing dragons in blue on yellow. So that was a very prominent part of this room. Uh, but that that rug has since disappeared. So uh, her guests in this shot are the polo player Eric Pedley on the left, and then Francis on the right. Uh, this is her dining room with um, some beautiful Georgian furniture. She had um, Salviati glass uh, glasses that she designed, and then Misia Sert designed the table decorations, these coral branch pieces, which are in porcelain incense burners. Uh, the great uh, French uh, firm Be Maison Begues made the uh, um, beaded wall sconces. And then you can see some Vanini decorations on the console table on the left. She used a lot of yellow in other rooms. So you can see here that the curtains are also yellow. This is her bedroom 
as painted by Mark Hampton from an Andre Cortez photo. Of course, he was another famous photographer, 1940s view of the room. She loves shell pink, her bed linens are shell pink. Uh, this, this tester bed has a fishnet canopy with ball fringe and tassels. The ceiling light, which you can see up her right, is by uh, from a, a, a Jean-Michel Franck design. And then she also has shell wall sconces on either side of the mirror above the fireplace, shag rug. Uh, House and Garden said this room had a strawberries and cream quality because of the pinks, the whites, the reds. Um, so now we go to the famous portrait of her painted by um, Jean McComas, a close friend, well-known artist in the 1920s. Um, Frances is actually sitting in her blue boudoir. I don't have a good slide of the boudoir, but this is that that this painting, which is still in the house, hung in the boudoir. Uh, now this is her brother David Adler's bedroom. He and his wife Catherine would often visit Costa Mesti, and then David would come by himself after his wife died in 1930. This room was done in blue, yellow, and white. Uh, the the big black and white photo is the room as it looked in 1934. The wallpaper is a scenic paper called Monuments of Paris. And then the uh, uh, mustard yellow uh, bed canopy and curtains, which were uh, uh, picked out in blue trim. And then the, um, the, the rug here is also uh, blue at blue, shades of blue Chinese uh, um, rug. And then um, a um, uh, hobnail bedspread, white hobnail bedspread. Now, 1944, David Adler added a solarium uh, on the first level out onto the garden. So this is the solarium, which Francis decorated in blue and white. That fabric is, a, is called uh, Williamsburg Raleigh Tavern. She used it in blue and white. She also used it in red and white and other projects. Uh, Peking rug, quilted uh, ch uh, chairs with quilted white fabric, uh, bureau of French um, bureau plat, lots of blue, porcelains, including Chinese, Mexican pieces. That rope lamp, spiral lamp on the left is, is one of her own designs. Uh, this is the garden as it looked in the late 1940s. It was inspired by a garden at the Alhambra that David Adler and Frances Elkins visited. At this point, she had um, all kinds of, uh, she had fruit trees, palms, um, Italian cypress, quite a lot going on. So her bedroom would be the room upper right, the upper right gallery. And then this is the side garden and the patio furniture here is red and white. Her daughter, Catherine was married here in 1943, her first, first marriage. You can see the topiary. Uh, you can see it all looks very nice and, and manicured. Now, David Adler's house in Libertyville started out as a Victorian farmhouse. And when he bought the house in 1918, he started to expand it in French styles and, and colonial. And this is the uh, Norman style tower in the courtyard. On the right, a photo of David Adler about 1930 on horseback at the Audencia Club. And that's probably his Packard in the background. This is the rear elevation of the house. Um, that's um, Egyptian style uh, dog statues outside the, the on the steps here outside the sun porch. Uh, this is the living room in, in a 1920s photo. You can see there's various seating areas. And then this is a, a photo from the 1940s when the uh, wing chairs had been reupholstered. David Adler designed the fireplace. So you can see he was, he was very much, he likes the, the traditional uh, decor for the most part. However, you'll see some more modernistic elements as time goes on. Another view of the living room in the 1940s. I don't know what color the upholstery was, the quilted upholstery, but you can see there's a lot of books going on on the uh, coffee table, the side table, maybe slides on this chair in the back. This is the original dining room, which was restored in the 1980s. Uh, David Francis's grandson, uh, David Boyd, he had the furniture for this room and that was brought back. The Zubair wallpaper, scenic wallpaper views of North America was also uh, reinstalled. That, that particular pattern is still in print. Both Francis and David love Delft tile. You can see Delft tile around the fireplace. Uh, this is a, a close up of one panel of that Zubair views of North America paper. 
Now, in the 1930s, the last wing David added, he put a new larger dining room, oak paneled room, and that's a detail shot on the left of the dining room. On the right is the hallway uh, with a, a window detail, carved uh, curtains. And this is the sun porch. We, you saw the outside of this room a moment ago. This is a 1920s view. You can see everything is very symmetrical, very kind of neoclassical. This is David was a little more tradition, a little more classical in his in his preferences. However, he brought Frances in 1941, and she decorated this sitting room, which has a lot of a very classic Elkins elements. You can see the. Uh, light fixture ceiling light is is from a Jean Michel Franck design the, the limpet shell plaster ceiling light a core mandel screen which she she used in many projects a low copy table by Jean Michel Franck black leather Moroccan rug um, the statue on the left is a Thai Buddha figure giltwood Buddha figure which was originally in the Mandel house as you'll see in a moment. Um, and then this is, these are some uh, uh, color shots of some of the elements of this room from when they were auctioned uh, when, when David's uh, niece died in, in about, uh, about 15 years ago. The Coromandel screen, one of the uh, library chairs, I guess they're called library chairs. The, you can see a similar uh, light fixture to the one that was used in the sitting room. And then the uh, Buddha figure is still in the family, still owned by the family. This is another side of the sitting room with this large break front, another Moroccan rug, but inside the break front, you can see many different uh, Chinese porcelains, and both Francis and David were very much uh, love the Oriental influence. This is another side of the sitting room, but but this is interesting because now we see a Mexican silver screen. There's one on the right. There was another one on the left. And the table lamp is a is a jade Kong uh, Chinese uh, uh, vase made into a lamp. And then this is David's wife, Catherine. She was a writer. Uh, as I mentioned, she died tragically in an auto accident in 1930. On the left is a fo photo by the great Eugene Hutchinson another well-known photographer. He captured the, the famous image of David Adler, the profile shot with him in the mustache. On the right is, a, is from a painting of Catherine by Abram Poole, close friend of David Adler's. He designed murals for some Adler houses. Interestingly, she's wearing the same gown in both of these portraits. This is Catherine's sitting room in a 1920s view. Uh, Francis Elkins, I, I believe, had, had something to do with the original decor of the house. Francis loved hooked rugs, and you can see those here. Uh, let me go back there. Also, these painted toll, uh, excuse me, painted toll uh, candle sconces here. And you can, if you see all these, the garniture on the mantel, all these uh, pieces of Blanc de Chine, you'll see them again and again in the next few slides. So this is uh, Catherine's bed from the other side of her room in the 1920s, very simple. Now, when Catherine died, David made that made her bedroom into his bedroom, and this is his uh, his canopy bed. And the the bedspread here is uh, called uh, George Washington's Choice, made by a company called Bates. You can still buy that exact bedspread on eBay. There are several vintage bedspreads in that pattern. This is looking from David's bed toward. The, the fireplace, you can again see those Blanc de Chine items, and there's a portrait of Catherine above the fireplace there. Uh, now, here, here are the items that I just mentioned from uh, one of the Catherine Elkins Boyd auctions, the daughter who died, I think, in 2009. Excuse me, the niece who died in 2009. This was Francis's daughter. This is uh, one last view of David Adler's house. This is a guest bedroom upstairs. I believe this is probably the room where Frances stayed when she visited her brother. I don't know the color scheme, uh, but you can see the uh, corner, uh, the uh, wall br brackets, and those were uh, probably green and cream. So the, the bed may have had uh, shades of green. Now, Francis, uh, after David died in 1949, wanted to make his estate into some kind of uh, museum, memorial. So this is some very early 
uh, documents about that, the brochure uh, introducing the idea, a letter Francis wrote to the uh, mayor of Libertyville, of the village of Libertyville. And then uh, the brochure talks about one of the goals, which is to make the Adler home a museum. And then uh, over the years, after Francis died in 1953, her friend and client, William Blair, who's in a black and white photo at the top, he was instrumental and in, in, as, well, as was David, uh, as was Francis's grandson, David Boyd, in preserving the house, making it into a cultural center. And it is now the, the Adler Art Center. You can visit there, you can take classes there. There are a lot of children's programs and some of the rooms are preserved with David Adler's furniture. And that's Amy Williams, bottom right, who is the executive director. So now we'll see some uh, highlights of her work around the country. Uh, this is the uh, French style uh, Albert Lasker house in Lake Forest, a David Adler design from 1926. Um, this beautiful living room looks very traditional, but as you examine it, there's some modernistic elements, uh, beautiful pine paneling, um, a very simple royal blue and yellow color scheme with accents of blue and white in the chintz. Um, but you see the texture, a lot of textures going on. There's linen, there's leather, there's blue da damask on the, on the chair lower right. There's uh, Chinese rugs and there's a, a, a parquet de Versailles floor. There's a painted toll table lamps, but there's two very modernistic tables here. On the lower left is a Jean-Michel Franck um, a low table called a waterfall table. Um, he was a, a well-known French uh, modernist designer. Francis started to use his pieces about 1930, and I'll have more on him in a minute. In the back, uh, under the sofa, under the portrait of, of, of uh, Flora Lasker is a Serge Roche mirrored table. And this was another mo modernistic element Francis would include in some of her rooms was the work of Serge Roach. Here's the dining room with this uh, lovely wallpaper, which is um, available. Uh, Carol Thibault Pomerantz, a, a, a historic wallpaper expert, um, is offering the, the complete set of panels from this room, which de depicts uh, Greek music, muses sh uh, showing the arts, literature, painting, etc. So uh, this room was um, actually the furniture from the, the chairs from this room were reused in the Lasker's New York City apartment in the 1940s and covered in a blue gray uh, leather. And then this is the Shore Acres Club. Uh, one of the styles French, Francis would work in was early American. And this room is almost certainly inspired by the Belfry bedroom at Beauport in Gloucester, Massachusetts, Henry Davis Sleeper's house. And on the upper left is a, is a detailed shot from that bedroom with had, had green painted paneling and a Zubair scenic wallpaper called Decor Chinois. And this uh, living room at Shore Acres in the black and white photo had green paneling, had that Decor Chinois, Decor Chinois uh, scenic wallpaper. The other uh, 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 fabric. The other pattern was this hollyhock pattern, hollyhock fabric, which you see down below. But writers at the time commented, you know, room in soft greens, but with these bold touches of red in the red leather. So the sofa and the two chairs there were red leather. So that was kind of something using some some contrast. And this is another view of the Shoreacres living room with the with the decor chinois scenic paper. And as you can see, the, the paper's not only on the walls, but she either had uh, pieces of the paper or uh, uh, put on the above the columns here, the arches uh, between the arches, or it was actually painted on. I don't know which, but in either event, it's very interesting that she did that. Uh, now we go to Pebble Beach. This is one of her first projects in California, was the home of her friend Hester Haightley, who later became Hester Griffin. This is a 1950 Tony Duquette slide. Uh, the Griffins are on the right, and on the left is uh, Tony Duquette's, the artist Tony Duquette's wife, Elizabeth. And uh, in this room, which was, uh, the house was designed by George Washington Smith. Francis used English antiques, a uh, stripped pine table, a Jean-Michel Franck pottery lamp, Coromandel screens, uh, a lot of interesting things going on. On the right, you can see 
the so-called spider chair that she designed in this room it had was covered in black leather is another view of the living room francis designed the the uh, uh the window treatment with a pagoda pelmets behind colonel griffin you can see a gilded table lamp that was designed by alberto giacometti his so-called greek design and um this exact lamp from the Griffin estate was auctioned by the Phillips Gallery about three years ago and sold for $500,000. And that's a photo from the auction catalog. So this is another section of the Griffin living room, Griffith living room. No, Griffin, excuse me. Um, the, the sofa is by a, a Siri mom, the English decorator. Francis collaborated with her on a few projects or more accurately, Siri mom supplied furniture and fabrics um, and the the floor lamp there was a uh, Salvador Dali design and uh, for, for Jean-Michel Franck's uh, studio. You can see those spider chairs, this uh, strip pine pack cabinet, uh, lots of interesting things going on. This is a Fred Lyon photo from 1983. So that moder that abstract painting was not there in the 20s, but was added later. This is the dining room with beautiful um, English antiques. Uh, that Hester owned uh, from her house in Connecticut, uh, Chinese wallpaper, uh, uh, and then a blue Portuguese uh, rug, which added a modernistic element. There's a Picasso, Picasso uh, pottery in the back in the window mixed with some Mexican pieces. And this is now the um, Robert Mandel House in Highland Park, Illinois. This is the, the main gallery, which had uh, pine uh, pa paneling and just uh, what's re remarkable about this room is, is how Francis could create many different seating areas. So this is the seating area by the fireplace. I was mentioning that idea of down-home comfort. You can see how the furniture is very inviting, overstuffed. This is another section of the living room where she has a game group with uh, leather chairs and uh, again, different textures going on. There's leather on this chair on the left and then on the right there's a pattern on the wing chairs and then in the background is the rotunda where you can see that uh that buddha figure which was later in david adler's house and uh she did like to use zebra rugs sometimes they were real zebra rugs but she also had a company which could make large fake zebra rugs uh, now, this is Mrs. Mandel's bedroom. This shows how well Francis could use a very simple color scheme, and it looks very fresh and inviting. Uh, if you were to see the room in black and white, it would look maybe a little stodgy, but you can see in color, it's very, it's quite vibrant. The French blue on some of the chairs, this beautiful chintz, that's an actual fabric sample from this room from the Elkins Archives at Monterey Peninsula College. Soft green walls, very restful room. This is Mr. Mandel's bedroom, uh, which was also done in a very, very simple color scheme, very subdued, uh, the, the reds and blacks in the fabric on the bed and the curtains go very well with the, uh, the deeper wood paneling and the, um, and, and the green carpeting, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, which was something that she was just starting to do then. This is the upstairs gallery, which is, uh, Again, showing Francis could could just take a simple like the the bl the blues and whites and other colors here and use many different patterns in the same space. There's a different pattern on the settee than are on the chairs on the right, and th then are on the curtains. Uh, and uh, then these these display cabinets. The second one on the right there, and, th and these have a lot of. Uh, uh, Chinese blue and white porcelains and Blanc de Chine. The second one actually contained a door to one of the guest bedrooms. It was called the hidden bedroom. Now we go to Carolyn Morse Ely's apartment. The dining room is on the cover of the book. Uh, David Adler fitted out some apartments in this 1931 um, Philip Maher high rise at 1301 Astor Street. Um, this, this this living room had flexwood walls, uh, neutral colored flexwood walls, a lot of uh, Chinese antiques, including the Coromandel screen, the, the sofas uh, and some of the fabrics were done in browns and oranges and uh, oriental carpets. But there's one, one modernistic thing, which is the Jean-Michel 
from table lamp on the left. She loved Francis loved Queen Anne mirrors. You can see one uh, above the uh, the mantel here. Uh, this is uh, another view of the living room for the windows, very tall windows. Um, the undercurrent, the under curtains actually had little specks of sparkly gl glass in a, in a kind of a sheer fabric. So that created a sense of glamour. Some of the furniture here was repurposed from her country house. Uh, uh, the French firm Janssen made these uh, faux toys. There's one in the right and one lower left. And on the bottom here is, is some of the original fabric. So you can see what the color was. And there's more of those spider chairs as Queen Anne style crooksnip neck armchairs that Francis liked to use in several projects. Again, Queen Anne mirrors. This is the dining room, which was quite quite a, a, a elegant space uh, with um, um, uh, sparkly uh, mylar curtains. And those again, those uh, those under curtains with the pieces of glass, a uh, tropical mural in shades of uh, greens, blues, and 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 and, and whites. And then. Uh, these chairs here covered in gray leather, leather were repurposed from uh, Mrs. Uh, Ely's country house designed by David Adler. The chandelier, which you can't see very close carefully, uh, but you can't see very clearly, uh, had a palm leaf uh, design, but you can see it on the cover of the book. Notice the doors to the room are silver on, in the photo on the right. More silvering going on. This is Mrs. Ely's bedroom with silver leaf wallpaper, the the uh, the the chest there and a little even a smaller chest on top of it were both silvered. Uh, the room was mostly silvered tones with some pale green and the curtains and a deeper green on her bed coverings. But uh, this room uh, again just had, especially with the tall ceilings and the reflective quality, I think would have been quite wonderful. And then looking out at Chicago, the Palmala building was was in sight and the um, the uh, searchlight or, or, or whatever on the rooftop would would circle around. And so the, the light would come in from that as well as from down by the, uh, you know, she could see down to the lake. Now, in 1930, as I mentioned, Francis started to use Jean-Michel Franck's designs, but she also interpreted them. This is the Joseph Ryerson's penthouse library. Uh, which was added to the Ryerson house, 1921, very traditional French style house, added to the house in 1930 as, as, a, as a new floor. But this is the first time Francis and David Adler were using the style of Jean-Michel Franck. So the sofa, the chairs, the lamps, the coffee tables were all inspired by Jean-Michel Franck. And then these this wonderful wall treatment uh, had... Uh, strips of, of, of veneer, but with little bands of ivory, uh, uh, horizontal bands of ivory. And the room was designed to showcase Mr. Ryerson's collection of Chicago mem memorabilia, Chicago um, drawings, paintings, etc. This is a close-up view of the same room toward the fireplace. Again, uh, if you're familiar with the work of Jean-Michel Franck, you can see how that chair in the background and the 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 Waterfall table are definitely his style. They may be actual French uh, Franck pieces, I don't know, because Francis later had permission to copy or adapt his work. Uh, and on the table, you can see a rock, what looks like a rock, I believe that's actually a Franck rock crystal lamp. So now we go to the most famous collaboration of Francis and David, the Mrs. Kersey Coates Reed House in Lake Forest. Uh, designed and decorated between 1929 and 1931. This is the gallery, very bold space, lots of black and white going on, black leather, uh, uh, white fabric, uh, 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 white, um, um, uh, you can see those stands uh, holding the urns have dolphin designs on them. Francis loved the dolphin design. And this room is extending toward one of the two uh, porches that's the, the north or south uh there's there's a little sitting area on each on each end of this gallery this is the uh, uh men's uh cloak room designed by Jean-Michel Franck completely designed by Jean-Michel Franck assembled in Paris then reassembled in Lake Forest it was originally 
very much a white room with white leather chairs, which later I believe turned brown, white leather on the, the little uh, bench there was designed by Paul Roto Canacci, who was one of the artists in, in Frank's studio. Uh, Alberto Giacometti did the bas relief above the fireplace. Jean-Michel Franck, those, those little uh, lamp table lamps are called windmill, the windmill table lamps. And then the little sconces on either side of the mirror are a familiar uh, Giacometti design of a, a hand uh, holding the bowl. You can't really see them clearly here. But on the other hand, the women's powder room dressing room was much more traditional. It had all this beautiful collection molding, silvering, uh, the walls painted uh, lacquered yellow, uh, these wonderful silvered wing chairs with elaborate fringe, uh, Queen Anne style uh, 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 mirror and dressing table on the right. And then this is the living room. This is a colorized stereo view from the 1930s showing the living room, David Adler design uh, he also uh, uh, duplicated the architecture for this room in the Zellerbach House in San Francisco in the 1930s. The renovation architect for that project was Clarence Tantow, but David Adler often assisted Francis in several projects with the interior architecture. So this room was done in uh, brown, uh, as you can see the brown and, and green and white chintz, uh, uh, the fabric sample lower right on the sofas and chairs but with the room had green accents on the leather chairs, the benches, and the uh, Chinese porcelains. And then she had these rugs, just as in the library, she had these Karabakh rugs bleached lighter. This is the famous library with Hermes goatskin panels stitched onto the walls, uh, ble more bleached rugs. Uh, Jean-Michel Franck designed the, the club chair in the corner, as well as the table lamp, more of those spider, so-called spider chairs at the game group on the left there. And, the, and the, the, the tall curtains were a very simple linen from Jean-Michel Franck. Uh, and so he was very, he was also involved in designing this room, but this room also had antique English paneling as well as the, you can't see the other side of the room, but some uh, paneling from an English country house. This is a colorized stereo view of the dining room in the Reed House with this antique uh, Chinese uh, paper from an English country house, uh, Chinese Chippendale chairs, and the rug is a, a cut a pile rug geometric pattern by Marion Dorn, a San Francisco born designer who was working in England by the 1930s. Francis and David used her rugs as did Siri Ma. This is Mrs. Reed's bedroom in a colorized stereo view. When I first saw photos of this room, I thought, I thought, where's her bed? But that's actually her bed. It just looks more like a day bed on the right. Uh, beautiful uh, pale green uh, fabric on the wing chairs and then a uh, very crisp uh, 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 beige walls with uh, picked out in, in gold trim. This is the a daughter's bedroom and the colorized stereo, stereo view. The, the chinoiserie style bed was, was from a Siri mom design, um, but you can see the elaborate tassels on the curtains and, and the uh, valances match the tester bed, the design of the tester bed. Um, so this was another, another uh, wonderful room in blue and yellow, which were Francis's two favorite colors. And then this is the famous ivory guest bedroom. These tall beds uh, were uh, made out of ivory antique beds. Francis had the walls silver, 14 foot tall room, as I as I understand. And everything in this room was very was very sparkly. And another Queen Anne mirror, Maison Begas beaded wall sconces. Uh, you can see other photos of this room in, in my book and also in Steve Soundley's book on Francis Elkins. So now we go to Evelyn Marshall Fields house on Long, on Long Island um, called Easton. David Adler designed the house 1931. Francis did the decor be between 1931 and 1935. This is a very traditional Georgian entrance gallery. However, the floor is very uh, avant-garde. This is a uh, ebonized wood with uh, Monel metal inserts, very dramatic, very bold, a black 
wing chair from Siri Mom, these eagle consoles. So uh, it would have been a very arresting uh, entrance hall. Uh, and you can see around the, the door, the, the arch over the door is also picked out in, in, in black trim. This is the living room, which had this uh, English uh, chintz fabric, uh, brown on white, uh, a quilted fabric on the sofas and chairs. Looks very traditional, Coromandel screens, etc. But there are some some more uh, 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 cutting edge elements, the Giacometti uh, table lamps, and there are other Giacometti and Jean-Michel Franck tables throughout the room. And this room, uh, the, the, in, the, in the back there, that what looks like a window is a door that would slide up to go onto the sun porch. This is the uh, men's dressing room in the field house. This is all Jean-Michel Franck furniture. You can see another one of those uh, Giacometti sconces with the hand holding the bowl and uh, very similar, very uh, simple linen curtains puddling on the floor, very much like the Reed Library. This wonderful uh, dressing table and matching mirror. This is one of the guest bedrooms. This is the Chinese bedroom in the Reed House. There's again that tester, that uh, chinoiserie tester bed from Siri Mom. And uh, this room was done in soft shades of green. The bed coverings were uh, what's uh, almond green. And then the, the, the Chinese paper was, it was deeper shades of green. This is another view of the Chinese bedroom, but you can see all the details going into this. Everything from the items on the uh, knickknack shelves to the pieces on the dressing table, the beautiful uh, ivory mirror, uh, the um, almost every case Frances Elkins would put a chaise long in her rooms. This one has has a uh, uh, is uh, fringed, and then even the the uh, the uh, balance over the doors has a pattern to it. So there's actually a lot of pattern going on. Now this is is the most uh, modern bedroom in the field house. This was probably designed for uh, Evelyn's uh, friend who became her husband in 1937, uh, the landscape designer, Diego Suarez. Uh, here, Francis has designed the, the chaise and the chair covering a, in a very rough textured fa fabric. The design is inspired by Jean-Michel Franck, the very bold black and white floor, black basalt uh, pieces on the uh, above the mantel. And then you look into the bathroom with the black and white marble. So um, this, this would also have been quite bold in cover, color. And this shows how well Francis could mix the traditional, like the rugs and the antiques with the, with the modern. This is the Lester Armour House in Lake Bluff, Illinois. This is the uh, entrance gallery with this beautiful hand-painted uh, wall covering with uh, there's Indian heads and the little uh, uh, ab above the green, the Celadon green, the border there, and then a, li a little palm, palm trees also painted on there. Wonderful Russian style, a chandelier probably from the Caldwell Company. Uh, leather benches, and then these niches with these Greek statuary. This is the library in the armor house, more um, English paneling and uh, beautiful uh, shades of uh, uh, beige and pink and greens and more quilted upholstery. Those are very familiar chairs. Uh, Francis called it the Howard chair, those two chairs by the fireplace. And then the shades on the table lamps are uh, mica, so they would have cast a very interesting light when those lamps were lit. This is the dining room in the armor house. There's another Marion Dorn cut pile rug, Coromandel screens, uh, wonderful Georgian antique uh, dining uh, table and chairs, and then blue, uh, uh, brown and white chintz curtains. And a, another marvelous chandelier, you, you, you're seeing these many wonderful crystal chandeliers. This house was uh, used for the uh, 1978 Robert Altman film, A Wedding. So if you can see a few of the details were still intact, including the chandeliers when that movie was made and the famous mirrored bathroom. I don't have a photo of it, 
that that, that appears in the movie uh, in a scene with Carol Burnett. And this is the uh, sun porch, uh, blue, lovely blue and white scheme, uh, uh, rattan chairs, uh, Chinese Chippendale chairs covered with, with uh, leather seats, a, a Moroccan rug, a low Jean-Michel Franck uh, coffee table, uh, whitewashed brick walls, you know, very fresh, looks, still looks very fresh today. Now we go to the Lester Armour House in Lake Forest, a 1934 David Adler design. This is the living room. Uh, a, a more familiar photos of this room show the sofas and chair reup chairs reupholstered, but this is the original fabric, the heavy brush fringe. Uh, that's an example of the fabric down below, uh, which was called Ming Blue. The fabric color was called Ming Blue, and that's a, uh, a Ming base, where you can see that shade of blue. But there's another case where Francis was introducing some some more uh, uh, avant-garde elements, including the Giacometti Petit Flambeau table lamps you can see by the fireplace. Uh, the, the fringe uh, on those curtains was also done in blue and white. And then you'll see the, the rug in the next picture. It's a Chinese key design in the, in the rug. So this is the other side of the living room with these wonderful carved uh, valances above the curtains in that little bay window. Uh, if you study those closely, and I don't have a close-up photo, it's they're actually uh, very much chinoiserie figures. Uh, and the loop chairs, so-called loop chairs, were a design that Francis uh, created inspired by 18th century English chairs. And that's one of the reed, uh, excuse me, the uh, Wheeler uh, living room loop chairs on the left there in Francis's workshop. And on those two um, stands are Giacometti vases. This one's called Egla, Eagle. And uh, one of those uh, vases sold at auction recently, not from this house, but from another commission, sold recently for $800,000. So Giacometti is very collectible. So now we'll move on to the uh, library, this beautiful 46-foot library in the Wheeler house with this uh, soft pine paneling. And uh, David Adler created these wonderful uh, seating areas with these projecting bays uh, for the books with rounded pediments, Francis Elkins chairs, uh, upholstered chairs by the fireplace, another zebra rug, parquet de Versailles floors, uh, carved English stag uh, uh, sculpture above the fireplace. Uh, this is uh, just one of, I think, one of Francis's most interesting rooms. And this is the, the dining room in the Wheeler house with this xenotherm uh, black floor. Uh, xenotherm is sim similar to, to linoleum. Uh, what's striking here is more of the, uh, the carved uh, lambrequin covers uh, were, were also quite interesting carved by, uh, in, in Monterey by Peter Stipling. And then this room also had uh, two paintings by the English painter Glenn Philpot. And in the next photo, you'll see the other side, another side of the room. And this is a painting called Reclining Nude. Henry Thomas, a friend, uh, a friend of uh, Philpot's was the model. And you can see that that's inset above the uh, sideboard there. And the room's color scheme of, of yellows and uh, blacks, whites, uh, was inspired by these paintings. And this is a sample of the curtain fabric there on, on the left, excuse, excuse me, on the right. Now we go to San Francisco. This is the James Zellerbach House, one of the grandest homes that Francis did on the West Coast. The house was built for the Fuller family in the 1920s, designed by Arthur Brown. But when the Zellerbachs built, uh, bought it in the mid 30s, they hired Francis to renovate it. She brought in the architect Clarence Tanto and also David Adler. This is the main gallery, color view on the left. You can see uh, blue and white Moroccan rugs, uh, console table, palm form console table, matching mirror on the right by uh, Emilio Terry. And there's another Giacometti vase. You can see that in both photos. Uh, Frances had the ceiling lowered, and she had these palm pilasters designed by Angelo Andriel of New York. 
Uh, we're looking on the left from the entrance, the entrance uh, vestibule with uh, uh, hand painted Chinese wallpaper and Waterford lamps into this gallery toward the living room. And on the right, you can see a view toward the living room doors and the curtains were a uh, uh, blue and cream Fortuny fabric. Now we go to the living room, a very plush room, but done in very subdued color schemes. This is the original upholstery fabric, this damask uh, material, heavily uh, fringe, brush fringe. You can see another one of those Giacometti gilded uh, table lamps, the, the Grec lamp in the background. You can see similar uh, fringe on the curtains to the Wheeler living room, another beautiful crystal chandelier. Now this is the room which had the same interior architecture as the Mrs. Kersicoats Reed House. Uh, lower right, you can just barely see a Jean-Michel Franck um, uh, uh, a table, mica table. And the only accents of color in this room were uh, orange, orangey red. So this is another view of the living room looking toward the famous card room on the left. The little tables uh, by the, the fireside chairs were dolphin form. As I mentioned, Francis loved the dolphin form. Uh, more Giacometti uh, lamps there on those stands by the fireplace. And, uh, and uh, again, you can see the bench and the, and the chair are, in, are in, that, uh, in that deep orange. Now, this is the uh, ladies' powder room, which was inspired by the Nymphenburg, a room in a mirrored room in the Nymphenburg Palace, according to notes that Francis Elkins uh, wrote in uh, in the project file, and there's more beaded baguettes, wall sconces, silver dressing table, uh, Murano glass uh, accessories on the table, and uh, lovely lacquered walls, silver silver leaf uh, on the ceiling. This is the uh, uh, this is the bar and adjoining uh, card room. This was uh, inspired by Jean-Michel Franck with this uh, stripped uh, veneered walls, oak walls, and uh, Francis designed the uh, bar stools you can see here, and also the uh, bench, which is out of sight here. Uh, uh, the little low coffee table is a Jean-Michel Franck pineapple table. But this room is now, uh, uh, and its furniture is still intact. The present owner bought the house about three years ago. Is very much a fan of Francis Elkin, so he's retaining a lot of this, uh, the, the Zellerbrock decor. This is the card room in a Fred Lyon photo. He also took the last photo. Uh, looking toward the bar, and you can see the shell sconces, as you'll find in many Francis Elkin's interiors, shell wall sconces. And uh, more furniture. She designed those little banquettes and Garadon tables as well. Now we go to one of the guest bedrooms. This is the attic guest bedroom in the Zellerbach house. Uh, Frances actually liked Victorian furniture, but she would repaint it. She'd add contemporary fabrics. Um, so here you can see Victorian sofa and chair, and then a very simple modern Jean Michel Franck. Uh, table, uh, excuse me, floor lamp on the right, and those little uh, plaster hands affixed to the the uh, the shaft of the lamp were probably designed by Francis, but inspired by Alberto Giacometti. And you can also see the sconces above the fireplace are also very uh, contemporary. Now I'm in the middle of her career. About 1936, Francis started using the uh, brightly colored, rough textured uh, fabrics of Dorothy Liebes, uh, Californian um, with a studio in San Francisco. And on the left, there's a, Francis, a photo of Francis and Dorothy Liebes uh, uh, pick, uh, selecting the, the fa fabrics, planning the fabrics for the Yerba Buena Clubhouse. On the right is Dorothy Liebes in her San Francisco studio with examples of her fabrics in the uh, 1940s photo you can see banded chenille you can see uh fabrics with a, with metallic threads in them and you can see that like francis she had this wonderful sense of color but they actually designed together francis wouldn't just order things from dorothy Liebes. they worked closely together and the day after francis died dorothy Liebes wrote her 
wrote Francis's daughter a letter and saying, you know, I'm, you know, I'm very sad that your mother has died. Nobody inspired my creativity more than your mother. This is the Yerba Buena Clubhouse at the 1939 Golden Gate Exposition. Fair on Treasure Island in San Francisco. The architect was William Worcester. This is one of the hallways. The walls were silvered, black linoleum on the floor. But Francis also had uh, furniture silver. There's a French provincial chest, which is silver. These silver chairs with gold fabricoid, which is a vinyl fabric on them. And all throughout the clubhouse uh, are these wall sconces of a uh, projecting fist arm uh, holding up uh, bowls of uh, light. And uh, those, I believe, were Francis's design inspired by Giacometti. I'm not sure if they were Giacometti originals. This is the Victorian waiting room. You can see the uh, uh, floor lamp here is like the one in the Zellerbach attic bedroom. And there, not only are those little plaster hands on the lamp, but they are also uh, acting as uh, uh, tiebacks for the curtains. And on the left are Jean McComas paintings from House and Garden showing this Victorian waiting room, which was in red, white, and black. Uh, the Yerba Buena Club waiting room in, in, in the magazine paintings. This is the main lounge. Uh, this is a colorization by Victor Mascaro of New York. We believe it's pretty accurate. Uh, this room was inspired by, uh, partly inspired by uh, Carlos de Bestigui's Paris residence with these uh, curved Victorian sofas, fringe sofas, Blackamoor statues, blue and white color scheme. Francis uh, dispatched her friends to California beaches to collect seashells, which she had um, plastered onto the walls on either side of this tall mirror. Um, the chests in the background were also inspired by de Bestigui's, um penthouse in Paris. And then Francis designed these little smoking stands. Now these sofas, some of them were repurposed in the 1940s for the main uh, for, uh, gallery at the at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. Now this is another colorization. This is the main dining room at the Yerba Buena Club. The uh, spiral staircase in the background was inspired by a staircase in the De Bestigui penthouse. The uh, the curtains were yellow velvet, uh, also swagged above the cocktail balcony, which is the upstairs uh, space in the back. Uh, crimson colored chairs, excuse me, crimson upholstered chairs from a Jean-Michel Franck design. Francis used this design of chair over and over again. Pink tablecloths. The lamps, uh, the, uh, the floor lamps were designed by Francis Elkins, also inspired by, by Giacometti and Jean-Michel Franck models. This is, now we're moving over to the Stern Hall Women's Dormitory, uh, another famous public commission. This was the first uh, a complete women's dormitory at the University of California. Uh, Frances was very much inspired by Mexican design. This is 1943. She's not able to go to Europe. She's spending a lot of time in Mexico. David Adler had a house there. And uh, so she's bringing things back from Mexico, including these leather wrapped uh, table and chair on the right. Uh, the, the modernistic uh, lamps, table lamps were made out of obsidian and uh, cowhide rugs. You can see uh, Mexican silver standing screens in the background. Those floor lamps on either side of the fireplace are, the, are Salvador Dali. And then uh, the, the, the throw pillows and curtains are in yellow, blue, and red. There's also Mexican uh, silvered uh, wall decorations. Dorothy Liebes designed the uh, nubby uh, upholstery fabrics, very and uh, when the residents uh, saw this uh, space they, they, and the rest of Stern Hall, they were very happy. So for the next few years, they, they nicknamed Stern Hall Shangri-La because it was just so amazing. And Frances said when interviewed about Stern Hall, she wanted to bring good taste to young women who may have grown up in small towns and not had a lot of exposure and culture. So she wanted to create something really unusual, which she did. And this is some detailed shots of the furniture in Stern Hall, including the Mexican uh, leather wrapped uh, table and chairs, the, the silver wall decorations, uh, 
uh, wicker uh, bench, a silver screen. Now we go to Edward G. Robinson's house in Beverly Hills, one of her many Hollywood uh, commissions. She also worked for David O. Selznick, Irene Dunn, um, John Gilbert, Norma Shearer, Ina Claire, uh, and the Hollywood agent Jules Stein. This is um, uh, uh, Francis renovated uh, the, the Robinson house. She worked with the architect Samuel Marks in the early 1940s, English Tudor style house, but she created this very subdued space, the living room, low furniture, uh, quiet color schemes, beiges, yellows, few red accents. The main idea was to showcase Robinson's famous art collection. Uh, and you can see several paintings, sculptures owned by Robinson. In this photo, Francis loved mahogany um, wine uh, coolers and often used them as planters or, table, uh, or, or lamp tables, as she did here. This is the dining room with this uh, silvered Chinese paper, uh, Toulouse-Lautrec painting, uh, quite, a, quite a, a, one, a glamorous space. The cove ceiling was also silvered. And this is the loggia. Uh, Robinson also collected African art and, and sculpture. And you can see some of these uh, sculptures on, on, on the walls there. Cyclamen pink, Dorothy Liebes, fabric on the sofa and chairs designed by Francis. Once again, you see that armless chair design we just saw in the Yerba Buena Club, on um, this wonderful ebonized uh, black brick floor. Uh, the window, uh, the blinds on the left are pale green. And also you see the doors in the back are, are black. So very, very uh, a bold use of color here. Now we go to the Rob the master bedroom. Uh, Francis took the color scheme from the uh, lapis lazuli uh, uh, fireplace surround, and uh, then the the chair is that is in that shade of blue as are the hydrangeas. But there was also uh, apricot was the other color. You can see apricot color Dorothy Liebes throw pillow, the matching chair, the armchair. You can't see on the other side probably his and hers chairs, that chair was done in apricot. So uh, presumably Robinson had the blue chair. Uh, more of uh, Robinson's uh, art collection on the walls here. Also the fireplace had little little uh, pieces of mirrored glass. So that was also quite striking. Dorothy Liebes also designed the, the bedspreads. Now we go to the Paul Winslow house. This was David Adler's last project, a small, house in Pebble Beach, but it had a very uh, ceiling, uh, a very tall ceiling in the living room with plank ceiling, very similar to the Sol at Casa Mesti. David Adler loved the star design. So between the two seating areas, he had this uh, beautiful star design in, in the floor. Uh, and uh, originally he was going to do it in silver, but Mrs. Winslow said, no, I think it'd be better in in wood, and then when it was completed in wood, David said, you, David told Mrs. Winslow, you're absolutely right. Dorothy Liebes designed uh, some of the upholstery fabrics here. Francis designed uh, cabin crafts. She had cabin crafts design these uh, 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 area rugs in green and white and black uh, with uh, 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 tropical flowers and uh, leaves. Uh, Mrs. Winslow was from Hawaii, so she was, Francis wanted to sort of bring in that influence. You can also see those Giacometti style uh, table lamps in the background. Now here's the other side of the um, of the uh, living room. That last photo was by Fred Lyon. This is by the, uh, uh, the well-known Los Angeles photographer, Julius Shulman. You can see the cabin crafts uh, a rug down below and uh, the Giacometti style uh, lamp that Francis designed and another uh, uh, a, a lamp designed by Francis on the right. But uh, it's nice, uh, it's very refreshing to see this uh, green and white space leading into this very bold uh, uh, dining room. And I'll show you the dining room in a minute. These are two detail shots by Fred Lyon, uh, the lamp on the left, table lamp, and then the uh, cabin crafts rug on the right. But also you can see this, this table is very uh, weathered and distressed. And uh, along with the 
uh, textured uh, Dorothy Liebus upholstery fabric created again that that down home feeling that very comfortable sense of uh, intimacy. Uh, this is the dining room, uh, Guatemalan uh, hop sacking on the walls and curtains, uh, French chandelier, a uh, very contemporary Swiss tablecloth in black and white and 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 uh, modern uh, uh, pottery plates from the G uh, the Morris gift shop in San Francisco designed by Frank Lloyd Wright and uh, mezzotint uh, wall art and then there's some Chinese accents and and uh, including the low table and this is the uh, Royal Hawaiian Hotel Francis had a lot of uh, work after the war redesigning hotels and country clubs so this hotel was designed in 1927, but Francis gave it a whole new look in 1946-47. Uh, the, the beams in the ceiling in this main gallery called the Oceanside Lounge um, were originally had a lot of detail work, very 1920s, very ornate, but she just painted over everything. And then the walls were in a very, very pale green. Um, the uh, You can see some of the Sofas repurposed from the Yerba Buena Club, uh, these tall um, uh, floor lamps with a uh, tendril design, Chinese tendril design. Uh, the chest on the right weighed three tons. Uh, Frances had her cabinet maker, Myron Oliver, take a, uh, an antique uh, Baroque chest and, ex and, 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 and use that as a model for these, for, these, uh, for these chests. And then the great floral designer, landscape architect, Isabella Warren, uh, the first few years of the Royal, when the Royal reopened, she did the floral arrangements, she planned them and also the gardens. But you can see the uh, Celadon green, the pale blues, the coral colors and the upholstery, uh, those chairs and also the uh, black, uh, ebonized black low coffee tables with brass trim were, were designed by Francis Elkins and then the uh, the screens and you can't really see the design. They had split leaf philodendron brass appliques, and those screens were designed by um, uh, David Tollerton. Now this is a close up. You can see one of those screens I was just mentioning. Francis loved split leaf philodendron plants. She used them constantly in her California commissions, and uh, also the guest bedrooms. Many of them, the curtains had either split leaf philodendrons. Or, high, or 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 other tropical flowers, and on the right is one of those chests that I was uh, just mentioning. Francis also designed the Garadon table on the left, the gilded bean jar lamps. Uh, Dorothy Liebus did the uh, fabrics for the blinds throughout the hotel and and some of the upholstery fabrics. Uh, on the left, that gilded uh, mask is actually a, a, a lamp outside the dining room designed by Remo Scardigli, an artist in Carmel. And on the right is a newspaper photo of Francis in the frantic two weeks before the hotel reopened in February, 1947. She and Gardner Daly, the renovation architect, Dorothy Liebes, Isabella Warren, they all rushed to Honolulu, they worked around the clock for two two weeks to get everything ready. So Francis is inspecting one of those Remo Scardigli uh, mask uh, lights as it was uncrated. And then this is the dining room. Francis repurposed the original 1920s uh, chairs and covered them in a, a fresh green fabric. I had the chairs painted lacquered black. Dorothy Liebes did the uh, blinds. You can just barely see those in shades of green and gold. Gardner Daly designed this whole new dining room. The original dining room was, was torn down. So this glassed in very spacious, bright dining room was added. And on the right is a tourist slide from the early 1950s. Uh, you can see how dressed up everyone was even in Honolulu at that time uh, when they went to stay at the Royal. And this is the women's powder room. Uh, Tony Duquette, the Los Angeles artist, designed the uh, the planter here with um, she shells and other things appliqued, and then the um, the uh, colors again. Francis loved that apricot. We saw that in the uh, Robinson master bedroom. You can uh, see apricot color fabric on the silvered uh, uh, dressing table benches, and then this uh, bleached 
gray gray breached uh, wood paneling. So that's an interesting con uh, contrast of something that looks very fussy and glamorous and something very rustic. This is the uh, surf room bar, had a waterfall behind the bar. So water was coming down behind the, the, the plantings there. Dorothy Liebus designed the uh, fabric there on the uh, bar stools. And then this is one of the guest bedrooms at the Royal renovated guest bedrooms in the older wing. There was also a newer wing. And you can see again, that split leaf philodendron leaf uh, on, the, on the curtains. Now we go to the Lewis Lapham house. Frances loved uh, um, uh, the Asian influence. And here she's using Coromandel screens, uh, gilded bean jar lamps of her design, a Korean ancestor portrait, a French provincial low table, uh, the walls were painted both uh, beige and, I and, um, uh, can't remember the name, uh, Café au lait. And uh, then uh, this is the um, Coleman House in Pebble Beach, a gardener daily design. Francis had also decorated the home of the Colemans in Miami, Oklahoma. Uh, Francis designed this patio furniture that shares the table uh, use this brilliant red fabric. Uh, the landscape designer, as uh, with many Gardner Daily Francis Elkins California projects, was uh, uh, Thomas Church. And um, you can see how Francis matched the red of the loggia furniture with the, uh, with the umbrella and the, and the furniture out on the terrace. This is the living room in the Coleman house. The uh, artist Bruton sisters, particularly Helen Bruton, created these terrasso top tables for Francis for a lot of her uh, work in the 1940s, 1950s. Uh, German hand block linen fabric on the sofas. Francis loved gondola chairs. She, did, she had uh, copies made of gondola chairs and used them in some of her projects. You can see a quilted yellow fabric gondola chairs. One of her rope lamp designs, spiral lamps, inspired by Jean-Michel Franck, and then Delft tile at the fireplace. Uh, this is Gardner Daly's apartment in San Francisco, very small bachelor apartment, three-room apartment, after he divorced his uh, first wife. And uh, Gardner Daly also loved uh, Asian things. In fact, he designed furniture. He was working with Francis on some furniture designs. So uh, the living room shown on the left, Coromandel screens, a uh, Bruton Sisters terrazzo table, uh, gilded floor lamps, uh, uh, authorized copies by Francis Elkins of a Giacometti design, Chinese desk in the foreground, bonsai, uh, maple bonsai on the right, another view of the living room, and uh, that antique Chinese cabinet on the left Gardner Daly designed a very simplified modern version of that for the San Francisco Museum of Art Members Room, which appears in my book. And you can see another, uh, you can see a gondola chair on the right by the fireplace. So now we go to the den in Gardner Daly's house. And this room had silvered uh, wallpaper, this brilliant red upholstery on the day bed and uh, bench and curtains, uh, another Bruton Sisters coffee table. Now, Frances was known, uh, you know, she wanted access to her clients' uh, projects, so she wrote Gardner Daly a note. She just stopped by and announced when he was at the office and said, and she wrote him a note and says, you know, you really need to put a screen to hide your refrigerator because, believe it or not, this, this is actually a very small space. So she drew him a little diagram of, of where to put the screen to, to, to hide the refrigerator and block off the kitchen. So this is the uh, Edward Topham House in um, Atherton, California. And uh, this just shows how Francis could do things, uh, do very simple things. Again, one of the, the floor lamp, uh, this chest of drawers. She loved Etruscan pottery. So there's an Etruscan uh, piece uh, on top of the, um, on top of the chest there. And then this brilliant green upholstery fabric that's part of the living room and the foreground and the color photo. Now, this is the dining room in the Topham house. You see this uh, a spiral uh, 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 floor lamp, but here she's gilded it. She's gilded the console table, uh, which she designed based on an Emilio Terry design. 
And then uh, uh, the shell form ceiling light, Dorothy Liebes did the curtains and the blinds there. Again, there's that familiar Jean-Michel Franck style chair, which she used in many projects, but here she's covered it in, in red and green and beige. Uh, and then she designed these frames. She used them for mirrors and also for uh, for paintings. And here she's she's gilded them. This is the sun porch, uh, or excuse me, the rec room in the Topham house. Francis again designed this furniture. As I mentioned, she loved the dolphin design. So she had this uh, relief piece uh, of dolphins, uh, this artwork on the left. I don't know who the artist is. It may have been Jane Berlandina. Uh, throughout this room, and you can't see other parts of it, the bar stools had dolphins on them. The bench outside by the pool had dolphins on them. So uh, she was just taking that that dolphin theme uh, throughout and using it throughout this this room. So now we go to one of her last major projects, a uh, very famous house, the Albert Schlesinger House. Uh, the Schlesingers were the parents of Nan Kempner, fashion icon of New York. Uh, this is the uh, entrance hall. Uh, Francis designed these albatross sculptures, again inspired by Alberto Giacometti. The Schlesingers also had some African art. You can see a sculpture there on the right. And then this curving staircase. This is a Gardner Daly house. Curving staircase went up three floors. Now we're on the second floor. Uh, this is the gallery on the second floor. On the left, uh, you're just coming up the stairs and then that little uh, uh, space uh, uh, in the center is the powder room is on the right. You can see the shell form wall sconces. Uh, and then on the on the color photo on the right, we're going into the living room. Those doors are 14 feet tall, gilded uh, doors. This is the uh, living room in a colorization by Victor Mascaro, uh, 18th century Dutch leather screen on the right. Uh, very, very pale pink walls. You can barely see the pink. Pink sofas and chairs, uh, excuse me, pink sofas. Uh, American Beauty red velvet curtains, uh, Blackamoor tables, Adam chairs, gilded and uh, with black upholstery, um, and very simple. You can see there's not a lot of art on the walls, but just that that very simple fireplace also gilded. These are some detail shots from the Schlesinger living room. The Dutch leather screen as it looks today. Francis again running with the dolphin theme, the andirons, the ashtrays or dolphin form. This is Mrs. Schlesinger and she's in the other side of the living room and you can see the Adam sofa and the, and the red silk fabric, uh, the Chinese uh, lacquer cabinet, more of the Adam chairs and uh, uh, press impressionist art. This is the dining room in the Schlesinger house. Uh, uh, again, these tall gilded doors, Dorothy Liebes uh, sparkly fabric on the chairs and banquette. Francis designed the console table and the floor lamp and the pilaster, all based on um, Emilio Terry designs. And here is Francis's uh, sketch for the Schlesinger console. That's her handwriting from the Elkins archive. So. Uh, she was very adept at uh, 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 using the designs of these European modernists, Jean-Michel Franck, Alberto Giacometti, Emilio Terry, and creating her own interpretations. But she did have uh, authorization from Franck to, to copy those uh, Franck and, and Giacometti designs. Now, this is one of her last great public commissions, the Santa Anita Turk Club, the Los Angeles Turk Club at Santa Anita Park. This is the chandelier room. The club house, uh, the turf club was built in 1934, but Francis redecorated it in 1946 and 1952. This is a 1952 version. The four tall uh, 18th century French chandeliers Francis purchased in London in summer of 1946. The room was done in soft shades of uh, green and gray. This very long art deco bar and there's a scene in the 1954 A Star is Born with Judy Garland, James Mason, a scene toward the end of the movie where James Mason is in this room and you can see the Elkins decor. Here's that scene uh, 
uh, James Mason is uh, uh, hitting the bottle again, unfortunately. And uh, on the right, you can see through those doors into the dining room, the Brazilian room, and you can see the scenic wallpaper. I'll show you that dining room in a minute. Upstairs, this is the president's room with uh, wood paneling, um, English wood paneling donated by Francis's client and friend, Jules Stein. Uh, looks very traditional on the surface, but there's some, some more contemporary elements, including the Jean-Michel Franck table lamps. And then the, uh, the square coffee table in front of the fireplace was designed by Guthrie Quavoisier, who had a a well-known uh, San Francisco art gallery. He also designed these resin or plastic tables and would add seashells and coins and all kinds of things. And if you look on eBay for Kuroc, C-O-U-R-O-C, you can find thousands of trays from uh, Quavassier's company made in the 50s with designs on these, on these black plastic, these various uh, designs. So now we look uh, another view of the president's room on the right, looking toward the dining porch on the left, and that's Judy Garland with her soon-to-be husband, Sid Luff. This is not a scene from A Star is Born. There was, Judy Garland didn't appear in the turf club, but James Mason did. And you can see in front of the sofas, uh, those Guthrie Covassier tables. Now this is the Brazilian room, the dining room, uh, downstairs, Francis designed these very tall stands, which are actually planters for elaborate floral arrangements. Dorothy Liebes designed the simple cream cream colored uh, textured curtains. And then uh, the room was called the Brazilian room because uh, uh, Zuber's views of Brazil was the scenic wallpaper used. Now the floral budget for the uh, Santa Anita racetrack back in the in the 40s and 50s was a hundred thousand dollars a year in uh you know and that would probably be you know six hundred seven hundred thousand dollars so going to the racetrack dressing up was a big social event then now here's a color view of the Brazilian room from Sports Illustrated 1955 on the left um the photographer is Bob Landry what another Another well-known photographer took many of the most famous Life magazine covers in the 1940s. Um, on the upper right is a section of that Views of Brazil scenic wallpaper. On the lower uh, right is uh, some society women in the Brazilian room, and you can see the uh, Dorothy Liebes curtains. So uh, the last two slides are the uh, uh, two of the... Uh, women's uh, uh, dressing rooms at the turf club. This one was very traditional. Uh, that's a uh, Dutchman's pipe wallpaper, which was, ex Francis actually had most of it on the ceiling, which was unusual. And uh, Capuchel, you, I saw that Francis designed Capuchel tables, including for Baker furniture in the 1940s, but Capuchel uh, top for the dressing table beaded bag as uh, sconces at the mirrors. Uh, and um, this room, you know, it has very much a, a traditional feeling. Um, and then the uh, interesting use of textures, uh, including the, uh, the, the chair on the left with this raised polka dot pattern. But here's the other dressing room done in a, more of a Japanese modern style. Uh, Japanese and Chinese modern, uh, Chinese tables, uh, Japanese uh, artwork above the sofa, silk on the walls, uh, silk fabric on the walls and ceiling, very simple contemporary. Um, this is, again, those, those chairs Francis designed, what she called the Kate chair, but with a trapunto uh, quilting and bullion fringe. And then the curtain treatments are, are very much classical Francis Elkins with the cascades and, and, the, and the elaborate fringe. And then you can just barely see on the right in the mirror, another little Chinese um, uh, table lamp. So I'll leave you with this quote. Um, she hired someone in 1938, Legrand Dix, Englishman, and she trained him to design furniture, um, uh, Kleenex boxes to install curtains, so she, he worked with uh, her until the end of her life, 1953. 
but uh, he asked her at one point, why are you asking me to do all these things? And, and, you know, I don't know if I can do it, but she really believed in him. So she said um, to him, we may never achieve perfection, but we have to try. And I think that was a lot of her approach. A lot of David Adler's approach was trying to always do the very best. And um, they could both be uh, difficult and demanding, but they really loved uh, working with their clients. And I think they derived a lot of joy from, from what they did. This photo, Francis, is 1938. She's sitting outside the Yerba Buena Club at a party for the Hollywood actor uh, Douglas Fairbanks. The hostess of the party was the great Elsa Maxwell. And Elsa and Francis hosted several parties at the Yerba Buena Club. There's a book about Elsa Maxwell. She's quite amazing. But as you can see, Francis is beautifully dressed. She often wore Chanel or Manboche, who were also friends of hers. So uh, this is a rare image of Francis smiling and looking looking happy. So I thought that would be a good way to end the talk. So any bet, I will be happy to um, answer uh, questions. Thank you so much, Scott. We did get a couple of questions that came in during the uh, presentation. Some of them are sort of related to one another, so I'll read them together. Um, where and how did she get her design skills and what inspired her to become an interior designer? What was her formation or education? Okay, so a couple of things. I had to eliminate a lot of slides, the uh, background slides, or we would be talking for several hours. But um, she did go to boarding school in France, Italy, and Switzerland. Her mother wanted her to have a very classical education, to be fluent in French. So she traveled a lot when she was a, a girl. She traveled a lot with David Adler. Uh, but her original goal was to be a concert pianist. She trained with great uh, musicians in Europe for, for quite a long time, and then she had to give that up. She, apparently, she was told her hands were too small. So then she thought, well, what else can I do? She tried composing, and then she decided to study interior design. I don't know where, if, if she went to school or anything. In 1952, she was sent questionnaire by who's who of American women. They wanted her in the 1954 edition. So in her files is the blank questionnaire. One of the questions was, what was your education? And she never sent it in and she died in 1953. So she wasn't in that edition of Who's Who in America. But I think her, her, her spending time with David Adler, I believe they were actually working together in the teens. She was unofficially working with him decorating houses before she moved to California in 1918. So I think she learned from David Adler. There was a famous Chicago decorator who started in 1913, Cornelia Conger. Her office was on Michigan Avenue, maybe even the same building as Francis. They did two projects together in Santa Barbara. So Cornelia Conger may have uh, mentored Francis, I don't know. But Francis had a huge collection of books. She was not only traveling, seeing all these houses and buildings in person, but she was had, uh, had a lot of very scholarly books about um, historical architecture, interiors, art. She was actually spent a lot of time studying art as a girl. So uh, so she was partly self-taught, but I'm sure David Adler was a big influence and she may have just been, you know, reaching out to some other early decorators and learning something from them. Great. Um, how did Frances acquire her clients? Her brother, word of mouth, other... Uh, well, a lot of the Chicago area clients came to her through David Adler. David had married Catherine Keith in 1916. Uh, David was not high profile, but Catherine Keith was from a very prominent Chicago family. So once she married David Adler, uh, David and Catherine were on the society pages all the time. They went to all the important events, knew all the important people. Now, David's first client was his uncle, Charles Stonehill. His wife was one of Francis's and David's aunts, gave him his first job in uh, Glencoe to build a French Normandy house in 1912. So that got him started. And I think people saw what David was doing. And then um, so he had the clients from also he worked with Howard Van Doren Shaw, his partner, Henry Dangler. They were socially connected, brought clients to David and then Francis. Uh, was very high profile socially in Milwaukee, but I think she also had Chicago friends. But definitely David Adler brought her a lot of the clients in Chicago, the prominent Chicago families. And then in California, 
Frances married when she married Felton Elkins. She she was the top of the ladder socially. He knew all the big San Francisco people who had weekend homes in Pebble Beach. So she was able to easily get into to that strata. But also she there was a very big artist colony in Monterey and Carmel. And she met those artists. She later brought them in and worked, they worked with her. So she was hitting at just the right time and Pebble Beach was having a building boom in the 1920s, a lot of money, prosperity in the 20s. So she had, you know, both those things going on simultaneously. The, the Midwest and California were were both uh, very fertile for her. And then she, you know, she was working in Hollywood by the 30s and all around the country. She even did, a, I think, a few projects in Europe. Um, do you know if she ever interfaced with another liberal area resident, Adlai Stevenson? Gosh, I don't know. That would be fascinating uh, to know. She had a lot of interesting friends. Um, Philip and Catherine Graham, of course, he was the publisher of the Washington Post. And then when he died, she was the publisher. Of course, you know, the Watergate uh, era, she was uh, very prominent. So they were guests of Francis at Casa Mesti in the 1940s. Um, so who knows? That would be something... Uh, the Dix, uh, the Edison Dix were very involved politically and they were supporters of Adlai Stevenson and clients of Francis and David. So I I, I would would not be surprised if uh, they had met Adlai Stevenson through through the Edison Dix. Um, were the rooms in the Shore Acres Club destroyed in a fire? Uh, yes, they were. There was a fire. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the date. It was either late 60s maybe 70s, maybe 80s. The living room, some of the, the wallpaper and things were the same. I think Francis redecorated it in the 40s. In some other books on David Adler, you can see later photos pre-fire. But yes, the, the whole building was was destroyed. And then I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the architect who recreated it just about exactly as David Adler had designed it. The only change I think was the front door was made, you know, or doors were made two inches wider, but otherwise it looks exactly like David Adler's design. But you can look in books. Uh, the Art Institute did a book on David Adler. Stephen Salney did a book on David Adler. So uh, between those two books, uh, there's more about the uh, Shore Acres Club and, and that fire. And we have several David Adler books here in the library, both in our circulating and our local history reference collection. I don't know if Shore Acres is in them, but those would be good places to start. Uh, yes, the the 1970 book by David by Richard Pratt uh, has uh, included Shore Acres, and uh, the Art Institute book has some photos, new color photos, or new as of 2002 photos of Shore Acres, and I believe. Steve Salney also covers Shore Acres, uh, maybe in the end of the book where he has just uh, overview of David's whole career. I don't know if I don't think think he did a spread on that, but but all of these books have different information, so it's good to you know if you're interested in this topic to collect all of them. Because um, and I don't feel my book is, and I think people should have Stephen Salney's book on Francis Elkins because I think they both complement each uh, each other and Steve was a great help to me as was Francis Elkins family. And I tried to use different photos than Steve used so that people could have both books and you know, you'll learn different things uh, about Francis from, from each of those volumes. All right, we got uh, two more questions. Um, did you use natural fabrics? I thought I saw a zebra rug, was that animal skin? Well, at that time, you know, there wasn't the consciousness about, you know, protecting animals. So she did use real zebra skin rugs, but I learned she also had a company that would make fake zebra skin rugs. And I don't know if that was out of any concern for animal rights or she just wanted a certain size and a certain home and she couldn't get a zebra rug. Now the Zellerbach house, um, Mr. Zellerbach knew somebody that MGM and he, in the 30s, and and they were trying to get some zebra rugs for the Zellerbach house. And he said, I'll reach out to him. They're always, they have zebra rugs in the MGM inventory. So so she had, you know, special ends to get real zebra rugs. But yes, she did use real animal uh, uh, skins and um, 
you know, so they're again, fur rugs, there just wasn't again, the, the consciousness about animals. She loved dogs. I know that. And she loved horses, but uh, you know, again, they, they weren't, uh, but she, she also used, um, she did use, I think some, uh, some faux leopard skin, you know, fabrics. That was a big thing for Elsie to wolf and Francis and that and Siri mom in that time period, I believe. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take these last two questions because we're getting kind of uh, later in the evening. Um, what important piece of information did you learn from the Adler niece? From the what? From Adler's niece. Oh, uh, actually, I did not know Catherine Elkins Boyd. She died in 2009. I had started my research about 2002. I knew other people who had interviewed her. But it was sort of early on in my research, and I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to reach out to her. So, um, so she, I, so I never met her. But Francis's uh, grandsons, David and Bill, have been very helpful. And since the books come out, I also know uh, her granddaughter, uh, Mary Louise. So, uh, so they're all helping me. The, the 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 brothers helped me a lot. The grandsons helped me a lot, and. And now I'm learning even more. I plan to do a second book on Francis Elkins. There's more than enough material. So uh, they they had the the grandsons had photos. They had letters. Uh, Francis's project files were found in her daughter's home of when she died in the attic and the uh, garage, and they were donated to Monterey Peninsula College. So anybody can go uh, make an appointment to see the material they have there, which is quite extensive. Uh, also, uh, you mentioned my Instagram uh, uh, page is SJ, like Scott Jeffrey Powell, CA, like California, SJ Powell, CA on Instagram. And that's where I've been posting about Francis Elkins since the book came out a year ago. And the last question we have is what was the cause of her death? Uh, she had uh, breast cancer. So in May 1953, she was preparing to leave for Venice on her annual trip and collapsed. She then ended up in a uh, hospital in San Francisco, spent the next several months there, um, had a mastectomy, et cetera. But her, her granddaughter told me that the doctors didn't tell her, tell Frances how sick she was. So she may not have anticipated dying. She died in August, 1953, but there's sketchbooks of furniture and she was drawing things. And somebody said, oh, that's dated August, 1953. So she did pass away in the hospital uh, after several months in, in, in fall of, uh, in August of 1953 of, of breast cancer. But, you know, maybe she, she didn't realize how ill she was, which may, could be a blessing. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much to everybody who attended. Oh, I guess pleasure. thank you to uh, Scott very much for this uh, really interesting presentation and amazing photographs. So thank you so much for, your, for everyone's time this evening. And we look forward to seeing uh, you all at our May uh, presentation. Please sign up through the library, either online or give the library a call. And uh, again, thank you, Scott. Thank you, everybody, and have a good thank evening. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.